Hi. Starts at the beginning. Always a good place to uh, start. So I was working pretty hard, I thought, through November, December, trying to get ready for close crew. Uh, it was a strange year, 2023. I had lots of injuries that I couldn't really get rid of. Didn't play much golf at the start of the year. Second half of the year felt a bit better. Could play a bit more. Uh, my tennis arm, golf arm problem, which I have in both elbows, unfortunately, um, and my shoulder, my neck, they, they sort of eased off a little bit, which meant I could play practice a lot more, which I was doing. Uh was nice to win the Austrian PGA Senior Championship in Atzenburg. Probably the highlights of the year, really, which really motivated me um, to get some solid work done for November, December, getting ready for January, going back to tour school, playing a course which I know I can play. I uh, played last year. Uh, did okay, missing some experience and playing time. Um, but I was looking forward to go and, and, and giving it a a serious a serious go. Um, unfortunately, um, didn't know at the time, but I was I was ill. Um, and on the nineteenth of December, December, I was. I did two hours on. I did two hours on the indoor on, on the eighteenth, nineteenth of December. Uh, it was about four o'clock in the morning. I woke up, went to the toilet, nearly fell over. Uh, had a dizzy spell. It was a strange dizzy spell. Never had before. Um, went back to bed and thought, I hope when I wake up that's gone. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't. Um, I couldn't look left or right without my eyes just sort of spinning on the spot it was a bit scary i knew nothing about this uh stupid bloody crystal which can fall out of your head and fall into the wrong tube causing you uh v b b n benign virtual positioning problem whatever which is a common thing strikes at all ages as as a, as a very famous comedian would say strikes at all ages um isn't really a problem, but having never experienced before and not really knowing anything about it, uh, very debilitating. Uh, so I was, uh, I spent then the next couple of days sort of in bed, being sick, throwing up all the time, not really sure what to do. Um, and then on, I think it was the 22nd, I went to the toilet to throw up. Sort of collapsed on the floor, couldn't really move anymore. Um, in which case, my wife phoned the doctor, uh, the emergency doctor. The doc he came, he called straight away for the ambulance and up into the hospital, um, where they quickly found out that it was uh, this VPPN or this crystal in the ear. It's quite funny, the, the, the ear, nose and throat lady, very nice, she started throwing me around the room, <laughs> doing these manoeuvres, a Epley manoeuvre, I believe it's called, uh, trying to, like a kid's game, trying to get this bloody crystal back into its hole. Um, it didn't work in the hospital, so I left and came back home um, and had a few days back in bed, trying to do these exercises, trying to get these these crystals back in the original places a man needs to get them in hallelujah on the 25th it was about three o'clock in the afternoon uh unfortunately i think i'd pretty much ruined christmas day for my child and my wife and for many of the family um but the, the crystals went back in so great um, I could eat again, I could drink again without being sick. Um, uh, but unfortunately, I kept having the only way I could describe it is I keep missing a step. Um, it's like a balance issue. I'm fine, 
walking, 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 and then I'd sort of look somewhere, forget some, forget to concentrate for whatever reason, and then sort of miss a miss a step. It was strange. Wasn't getting better. So uh, at uh, New Year, went back to the hospital to ask the uh, ear, nose, and throat specialist: Is this normal? Is this part of the recovery? Is it something which is just left? from having this spinny, spinny, spinny time uh, and then it might take a week or two for this to settle down. Um, she wasn't sure, but she said, well, you know, we'll do a few tests. We'll test it in her ear just in case I've got an infection or whatever, which could be causing this problem. Uh, I also had a, a, an eye check. Everything was fine. They, they you know, looked behind the eyes and did eye tests. Everything was everything was fine. Um, it poured different temperatures of water or some sort of liquid in the ears you know to test your, your inner ear everything everything was fine uh but she recommended you know you know just to be safe then sorry that we do uh, uh an mri scan on, on your brain uh just to um make sure that there's you know cover all bases to which, of course, I, I said, well, if that's, you know, what you think I should be doing, then, then let's get it done. So I um, went straight in for an MRI scan with contrast liquid um, so that the resonance is, 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 is better. I uh, came back the next day with my wife and my child back to the ear, nose and throat specialist, uh, walked in. She said, well, from my side, everything's fine. Uh, all good, all good, all good. Uh, but I just want to take you across to the other side of the hall because there's a lady who'd like to speak to you. So we came out of the, the of, of her room, walked across to the other side of the room to which I saw my wife and my child and said, be back in a second. There's a lady over here who wants to talk to me. Walked in, sat down. She asked me some strange questions about what you do and this, that and the other. And I told her I was a professional golfer, just getting ready uh to leave in a couple of days to uh, Turkey, tour school, big big chance, a lifelong dream. To which uh, end, she said, I'm sorry, Mr. Webb, but you're going nowhere apart from upstairs to um, the neurologist ward because unfortunately we've found something in your brain um, which we need to look into. Um, I had to then go outside and tell my, my wife and my child that daddy wasn't going home. Was not a nice day. Went up to the ward um, and then started the journey of the next few days of a lot of tests. A lot of tests. Um, I had like four hours at nuclear medicine where they, they you know, tested your throat, the thickness of your bones, yeah, your bones brittle, the bone marrow, the, you name it, 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 it was tested. And, and over the eight, nine days that I spent in hospital, I was getting back from the doctor sort of three, three possibilities. Um, I either had a, an infection on the pituitary gland, this is uh, part of your part of your brain, which is behind your eyes. Um, it could be a tumor, uh, or I possibly had a stroke. Um, for me personally, I didn't didn't like the sound of stroke. I, I felt good, strong, always have been, and and I. I, I <laughs> I'd like I'd like to think about that a stroke. I'd, I'd I'd feel that a bit more. Um, wouldn't like to have a stroke. Um, but anyway, so so the tests all sort of finished. I was showing signs of being okay. I had not any. It didn't put me on any medic medication um, because I wasn't really sick. Uh, I wasn't complaining of sick. I was just complaining of this little bit of dizziness. Well, not even dizziness, this little bit of balance problem which I, which I kept getting from time to time. It wasn't all the time. It just, just something which, you know, I'd, I'd notice every now and then. So they sent me out. They gave me some tablets just in case, some, some, some cortisone tablets, some hydrocortisone tablets, which, which they said, you know, if you feel strange or you feel like, you know, your body's going strange, take a couple of these and, and then give us a call and come in and see us. But you should be fine. You've been fine all weekend in the hospital. Um, your tests, everything seems to be okay. 
Um, so they, they 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 let me go, which was which was which was good. Um, the one thing that they did notice, they did, they did one thing that they did say, which which made me stay in for a couple of days longer than really I'd I'd have, I'd have liked to be in. I mean, I don't think anybody really likes being in hospital. Um, was that in my pee that there was some things missing in my pee, um, and that I was drinking quite a lot, mm, quite a lot. Um, but hey, well. Well, I having a drink. Um, so, so I went home. Um, supposed to fly out to Mallorca then on on the Saturday to work with a, with a nice group of people in, in Mallorca. Um, doctor said fine, there should be no problem. We should everything's okay. Um, and a couple of days before, I got a cold. My wife got a cold as well. So, sort of the Thursday before the Saturday, and I'd said to my wife, I "said I don't think I'll be flying." Because I wasn't wasn't feeling very good, but we were we were hammering the 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 neo neo citran neo citrin or whatever we it's called you know one of these pulvers aspirin C and so we were doing that morning evenings morning lunch and evening uh, and we both started feeling a bit better through Friday and Saturday morning I woke up and said well let's go you know I'm feeling better I said. You know, I don't have to. I don't have to play golf when I'm over there. I'm teaching and and, and you know, looking after my my my, my customers. Um, Saturday was just a, just just a travel day, so as soon as I got there, I said to my group, said, you know, suffering from a bit a bit of a cold, I'm gonna go straight up to the hotel room, get a good night's sleep, get some rest, get me medicines in. Um, Sunday felt better. Monday felt better. Tuesday I played 18 holes with them, feeling really really good. Wednesday felt like shit. Felt really bad Wednesday. It was just a free day, so I just took it easy. And then all of a sudden, I woke up at Thursday. Thursday, Thursday, I woke up at four o'clock in the morning, feeling deathly. I felt bad, so I got plans in straight away that I was going home. I needed to get home. That was that was just my only pulse. I need to get home on this day. Uh, so I phoned the agency, and said, "Please get me on the first flight possible out of here." I spoke to my group, explained to that they were all fine. Uh, they'd seen that I hadn't really been eating very much and been eating very well, um, struggling with food. They pale, and they understood that. So they said, "Fine, you know, you know, get well soon." And when you know, it's been a great week up to now, and we've got a couple of days, so they could they can manage it on their own. So I set off to the airport. Uh, two o'clock, get to the airport. Uh, Get on the plane, sat on the plane. The only thing I can think about sitting on the plane was, where's the sick bag? Please don't be sick. Just don't be sick. Don't be sick. I could see uh, in front of a lady who was next to me, there was a sick bag. Plane takes off. Don't really remember anything else. Passed out. Um, just broke out into a sweat and just collapsed. Passed out. Woke up. People all around me who were sat around me, they'd gone. Uh, and in front of me was a group of five people, stewardesses and three doctors, um, taking blood from my finger to test my sugar levels and asking me hundreds of questions to which I could only react and said, did I pass out? Uh, to which they said, yeah, you were in and out a few times. Um, like I said, it was, it was good that there was a few doctors on the plane. Um, and a nice lady from an emergency ward uh, in Munich who took really good care of me. And there was uh, a nurse stewardess, it was a strange old world, uh, the wife of somebody who I do know from, uh, from, from, from England, golf professional. Um, stewardess who was just traveling to Munich from, from Mallorca to get on to her job flying flying long distance and um, she sat next to me and we had a chat and she looked after me and made sure that everything was okay uh, as soon as we landed in Munich I was sort of thrown out of the plane uh, taken with the uh, the ambulance people on the runway into an ambulance where again they they went through a, a series of tests they did they did they, they took blood from my finger they did a little a ECG they checked my heart and whatnot uh, blood pressure and things and, and the doctor said well he's suffering from dehydration and, 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 and he's got no sugar in him um, he's obviously had a stomach bug or whatever he's been sick he, he you know he's dehydrated and 
you know, the, the, the oxygen on the plane, it'll do that. And, and that's what's happened. So they threw me out back into the airport, go and get my bags, get in the car, drive home. Uh, and he said, you know, listen, young guy, go and get yourself a litre of Coke and you'll be fine. Okay, wife picked me up. Uh, wife not having a good time, really, because being phoned up from an airplane that had just landed, being told that her husband is now in an ambulance on the runway and we don't know if I'm going to a hospital or what's happening. Um, but anyway, it all turned out well. Picked up my bags, my wife came, threw my bags in the car, we sat in the car, we drove home, um, made the decision while driving home that we'd phone somebody who we know who's a neurologist in the hospital who actually knows my case. Um, so I, I phoned him up, explained to him what had happened with the passing out in, in, in the plane and... and just generally feeling, feeling really, really terrible, really, really low, thin, drawn, pale. Uh, to which he said, you know, you've got to be there first thing in the morning in my office. I need to see you straight away. So the next day at eight o'clock, I strolled into his office. My wife dropped me off on the way to work. Um, he had set things up already. Uh, I had another MRI with this contrast fluid. They took uh, a lot of blood. And then I went and sat down in the in the waiting room uh, where I was slowly passing out until one a nurse came and grabbed me and took me into a room to lie me on a bed, at which point the doctor came running in and said, we found it, we found it. He's got no salt, his... Uh, Natrium level is, is is so low that we need to do something really quickly. We need to have, we need we need to get him on a on a drip. Um, so they put me on a four hour drip. No, I first of all I had uh, I think first of all I had steroids. Give my I think give my body a bit of a kick. I think not sure I was not in a good place. Um, and then they put me on this four hour drip to try and bring my, my salt levels, my, my, my natrium levels, my sodium, um, back up. Uh, they have to put it in really slow. Uh, apparently it, 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 it has to go in slow because otherwise your brain would swell if they, they try and raise your levels too quickly. So I had this, uh, four hour for our drip, I think I had three days, three or four days on the bounce of having this this drip. I believe it didn't work first time. Not not sure. Again, don't don't, don't quote me on this, but it's 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 all in the uh, the findings and the paperwork. And to which that end, I came up with with now that they're calling it uh, Addison's disease. Um, well, at least that's what they've they've wrote down. I, I'm not sure if they're really really sure themselves. It's uh, but it's in here is uh, Addison's disease. I have an Addisonial problem, which is uh, to do with your electrolytes, uh, electrolytes, electrolytes. I don't know German English anymore. Um, I have a problem maintaining my sodium levels, so I need. I'm on now different types of tablets, trying to find a balance, how to balance all the hormones and, and, and the things in my blood. Um, I'm now officially a member of the Tablet Society. <laughs> it's amazing how you get excited about receiving something and, and filling up things and... and trying to plan each day as, as it is. And, and yes, I suffer with drinking. <laughs> nice problem to have. Um, no, I drink and go straight to the toilet. Uh, my body doesn't seem to be able to take anything out of the liquids that I drink. So I can, I can, be, I can be peeing, unfortunately, four to five liters a day. Um, have I had a lot of lot of problems the last few weeks with hmm, going to the toilet for something else? Um, my body weight dropped down to eighty seven kilos, which I don't think I've been uh, eighty seven, no seventy eight kilos. So I'd lost, I lost 
just over four kilos in five days. Um, which thankfully is, thankfully is coming back now. And my body weight's getting back up to, to normal again. Although I just, I just did it. They gave me a spray to test that, that, to try and stop me from, from getting up three, four times in the night to go to the toilet. They gave me a spray for my, for my nose, which is supposed to switch off sort of the signal that you need to go to the toilet. Unfortunately, I then didn't sort of pee for 30 hours and my body weight went up to, oh God, it went up to 87 and a half kilos, which meant within 36 hours, I went up four kilograms at four kilograms. What's that? Eight, nine pounds. Um, so I stopped immediately do it, taking this spray, which the doctor said was the correct thing to do. Uh, and then within the next 24 hours, I came back down another four kilos. So my body weight now it seems to be okay. Um, I tried, I think the first couple of weeks that they, they had me on pred, prednisolon. Uh, shit, felt like a zombie. Couldn't walk very far. Tried to walk to the pub. Uh, walking really slow. Pulse was pumping at 150. Struggling. Uh, no energy. My testosterone level has sort of disappeared. Uh, so now I, they've put me on a different tablet, a hydrocortisone. I believe it's a bit stronger or I don't know. But I, I have a lot more I have a lot more energy. I'm a lot more alert. Um, haven't picked up a golf club since. 18th of December, life took a change, mood swings, darkness, darkness, I mean, I think one of the reasons why I, I thought I'd do this video is, is uh, you know, mental problem and talking about things is, is seems to be a, a big thing at the moment, and, you know, I did my own experience in the last few weeks of, of, of being in some pretty, pretty, pretty dark places is, is sort of finding out that spending too much time on my own with my own thoughts is, is not really the best place to be I think I think I think we as people we like to be busy and I like to be active and and it's okay to have a few minutes a half an hour do an hour meditation or what whatever but but if but if you're meditating you know you're working on something you're working on switching things off. If you're doing fitness, you're working on something. Um, what I, what I, what I mean is is just having time where you've got really nothing to do. Boring, being bored, and your head starts going, you know, left and right. Um, do a lot of puzzles now. Three thousand piece puzzles, good fun. Things that keep my brain active. Uh, yeah, so, so, you know, mentally, I believe I'm a strong sort of person. I get on with it. No, I know I'm not. I'm not. Well, it told me I'm not going to die. Might have been very close one time, but, but, but uh, you know, it's not, it's not a disease which, which should really be the end of me. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of a journey to find out which tablets, how much tablets, how do we balance the hormones? How do we balance the blood, the electrolytes? How do we balance the the infection in the brain that it doesn't spread? There's, there's, there's quite a few things for the endocrinologists to find out, to balance. Uh, so that's about where I'm at. Um, should be starting work next week. Hopefully, if the you know, tablets give me, I got to take it, take it easy, take it slowly, build things up slowly. Golf club are behind me, um, which is nice, really nice. Met some beautiful people on the way, some great people in the hospitals, some great people. Um, don't know about playing golf this year. Have to wait and see. Hope we can get things sorted. Well, 
that's about it for now. I'll, any any updates? It's uh, any any updates, and I think I will put them on. You know, it, it's it's a journey. It's a it's a discovery. It's an experience, and and I and I've always said in my lifetime that that every single experience is a positive thing. Um, if you break your leg, you've never broken your leg before. Breaking your leg is an experience. And it's something to get involved in, get your teeth in. Uh, I enjoy the discussions with the doctors. I enjoy finding out what tablet does what, what does which. Uh, I'm enjoying working on trying to look at any, any sort of diet changes I need to make, which could sort of help reduce, you know. Um, majority, I feel sorry for my, for my little one, for my wife, who having to put up with me and having to carry... The last few months, a bit of a bit of a burden, which, to be fair, I'd have loved them not to have had, um, especially the little one. Oh God, love her, such a strong little girl. Um, yeah. So before I get upset again, um, everybody take take care. Hopefully, see everybody. Speak to everybody soon. Goodbye.